Hello everybody, Harley Talks Prison here. Yesterday I called the prison where Kevin's at, South Central Correctional Center. And they, uh, sent, they said, uh, we're going to transfer you to the two house. Two houses to hold. First thought going through my mind is, I'm not in prison, he ain't going to transfer me to the hole. And, uh, so anyway, I talked to people in the hole, and they said, who are you trying to get through to and everything? And I told them, and they sent me to three house where Kevin's at. And, uh, I was trying to find out about his parole hearing because I hadn't heard anything from him in a while. And, and they said they didn't know anything about that, but they uh, said he was doing all right. But that night, Kevin called. I told him about calling the prison and everything. He was laughing. But we get to talking, and he said, I said, everybody's wanting to know. And he goes, well, it's only been two weeks. And it takes two to six weeks or eight weeks or whatever it is. And uh, I said, man, it seems like it's been longer than that. And uh, he said, as of right now, and he gave the date and the time and everything. I have not heard anything. Let everybody know that I haven't heard anything that I appreciate, you know, them wanting to know and their support and everything. So that's why I'm telling you guys this. Anyway, he, uh, uh, we get to talk about different things, you know. I, I should have just recorded the phone conversation. But sometimes, you know, he gets a, he has a mouth on him sometimes. And uh, in one case is when he was talking about the overdoses. I went to ozarkfirst.com and there's, saying that the autopsy reports say that they're uh, like I told you before that they was cancer and natural deaths and autopsy pending and all this BS you know you don't have seven overdoses in just a couple weeks and uh, you know people and you're saying that there are natural causes and this and that it, it just it doesn't happen like that. It never has before. That fentanyl open doses are close to 300. Uh, and uh, for this year. And uh, about half of those are fatal. But anyway, he said they're still on semi lockdown. But uh, I was trying to tell him how bad fentanyl was. He just wasn't getting it. He goes, yeah, I understand people are overdosing because they don't realize how potent it is. And I said, no, Kevin. Some of them are probably accidental. I said, you can touch somebody that has it on, their, on them and overdose. There's a case in, uh, I think it's Michigan or somewhere up there. Somebody put their toddler in a cart and... Uh, baby died from an overdose and uh, because they touched got some residue on them from uh, the cart so that just tells you make sure you wipe those carts down you know places like Walmart have places where you can wipe the, the, the carts down and people usually just wipe the handles down though but anyway he says this still continuing he said some of them he thinks are not being reported so I went on line this morning and was trying to find out about it anymore and I couldn't find anything the thing is that they're keeping this stuff from the loved ones who have incarcerated ones you know what I mean um, I've gotten emails from people saying that they just want to know what happened to their son you know he said, and the DOC is not really giving them any clear answers. You know, as I say, it's an investigation still going, ongoing, or something like that. You know, um, but this this crap's got to stop. They just need to be 
straightforward with us and let us know. You know, especially those who have the loved ones in, in the prison. But, you know, it really should be for all of us. We're taxpayers, right? And they're lying to us. Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me, you know. I, I understand. I saw a thing where one officer talking about um, correctional officer didn't give his name. He's saying that most are not even, staff that are caught bringing drugs in are not even uh, prosecuted. He said, you know, they're taken to the warden's office, forced to resign, and then they're walked out. He said it's called walking out, being walked out. And he said, no paper trail, you know, because they want to avoid that. He, according to him, they want to avoid the negative publicity, and I believe that, you know, but. It's better just to be honest. Say that you got a problem. Instead of hiding it and lying. And then everybody's wanting to know what's going on. That just brings more publicity. But that's the way the Missouri Department of uh, Corrections have been for a long time. And more so in the last, I'd say, 10 years or so. So... Kevin said he will give us an update. He will call. He said he promised he will call when he, get, he gets word about his pro hearing. And that's about all I got for you guys. And uh, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.